So it's time for the gardening week update again and it's actually Friday because it's raining and I've got nothing better to do so I thought I'd get this out of the way and I will update it tomorrow as well Saturday because that's when we're doing the harvest because it's raining on Sunday so I don't think I'm going to get very much done on Sunday. So let's dive in and I'll give you a quick update on my gardening activities for the week and a little glimpse of the other things that I've been up to to fill my time. This bit of news is that I normally write up this uh, gardening week and it's um, part of my blog on WordPress but to be honest I'm getting fed up with WordPress so I'm going to switch the master copy of that now to Notion so it's going to appear in the reference information section of my book under the relevant month and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So I think that's going to be a lot easier for me to update it as I'm going along throughout the week. Notion is just so much easier to update than WordPress and so much more reliable. So anyway, that's the first bit of news. So Monday, so it definitely feels now like my gardening life is going into its winter mode, although we're still in autumn and it's a very relaxing time. Uh, I've very little to do. I do like to get down to the allotment every other day for about an hour and just have a quick walk around my plot, see if there's anything, any damage, see if there's any dying plants need to be replaced, anything like that. Just looking for issues. It's just a nice thing to do. It's a nice plot. It's a nice site. I like to have a go walk around the site as well. I, it's just a nice way to spend an hour in the afternoon. I probably didn't mention in last week's update that on the Sunday, after I'd actually published this update, I did go down to the allotment and I cleared the last of the summer planted salads that were in the polytunnel and I replaced them with autumn planted salads that will last over winter. So those summer ones were coming to the end of their lives and uh, but I needed them. I needed them right up to that Sunday, that Saturday when I harvested them. Um, and so that now means that the polytunnel is 97% planted. So that's quite a nice position to be in. I always look forward to getting to that point. The whole of the other of the outside of the plot is also planted. So as I said, it's a very relaxing time and it means that I can get out and do all my other hobbies as well as concentrate on writing my book. And we'll come on to that a bit later so, on. On Monday, it was actually a very unusual day for me. Uh, so I did go out to the cafe in the morning for breakfast, but by the time when I got home, I had to stay in pretty much the whole day. Now, this never happens. Uh, I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of times that I've stayed in all day in the last decade, probably. Um, but I did have to stay in this time because Debbie had gone on a trip and she's got an Amazon pickup to do, which meant that I got to do the house autumn clean. Now, I really like doing that. I've mentioned before that I really like cleaning. I basically like anything that I've learned to be really good at. And I like to think I'm good at cleaning now. And yeah, so I got all of that done and loads of other little jobs. And one of the jobs that I always like to get done at this time of year as well is oiling all of the windows, all of the mechanisms, all of the hinges and all of that sort of thing ready for winter. So cleared out loads of those jobs that kind of accumulate in your to-do list. So I always look forward to a day at home or an afternoon at home or a morning at home that when the weather sort of forces me into it, just because it, I've accumulated loads of jobs that I'm really excited to get finished. Quite staying all day because there was a glorious sunset. So I just popped out to the seafront and had a walk along the beach and sat down and just watched it set. And that Watching the sunset and watching the sunrise are really highlights of my day. I absolutely love it. I don't know what it is about it. I don't know whether other people appreciate it as much as I do. But uh, especially at this time of year when, you know, you don't see so much of nature. Uh, yeah, it's just lovely to kind of glory in the sunset and the sunrise. So on Tuesday, it was another rainy morning. So I went to the gym and cafe again, and then I went for a walk all the way along the beach, heading south to a little local beauty spot called Fairhaven Lake. And if you've not visited St. Anne's before, this is a lovely little place to go. It's had massive refurbishment in the last couple of years. And part of that refurbishment was of the cafe, which has been turned back from its kind of modern phase into a traditional form uh, through a you know, big refurbishment. And it's quite nice, 
they certainly do a very nice sourdough toast now and that's what I enjoyed and I walked home and headed to the allotment. Two main things to do which I've covered in separate videos but the first one is that what I find is that on some of the varieties of lettuce that I grow over winter I get this kind of tip burn and it looks as though the wind has kind of desiccated the tips of the lettuce but it's nothing to do with that it's to do with the uptake or the poor uptake of calcium from the soil in winter and this is the general issue with all nutrients in the soil that the colder it gets the less able the plants are to extract the nutrients from the soil and yeah so it happens at the worst time basically when you need your salad crops the lettuce crops the most they start to degrade you get this tip burn now it doesn't happen in all soils but in my soils particularly because i think it's a sandy soil it happens quite a lot to me and it happens to my favorite lettuce as well which is grenoble red or red grenoble whichever way you say it and the solution to it is relatively simple you just spray with a calcium solution so i did that on all the lettuces just in case and it was a lovely windy day as well and that is just makes it perfect uh, for getting the leaves of leafy greens wet at this time of year because they're dry again within an hour or so and i really don't like leaving leaves wet overnight it's not so much just the leaves being wet it's the very high humidity that then results and that humidity leads to mold growth and that mold growth gets into um, damage to the stem which often happens obviously when you're harvesting and then you can get stem rot and you can lose the whole plant so long way around of saying basically do it on a sunny windy day so the second thing that I wanted to do was spray all of the algae on all of the polythene that gradually sort of accumulates through the summer and autumn and by the time you get into winter there's often quite a lot of algae on the polythene so I spray it with this algon solution uh, it's organic but I wouldn't get it in your water butts or get it on the leaves of plants or anything like that um, so it goes on the outside and then you leave it for a couple of weeks and then you wipe it off and get rid of all the algae and obviously the objective is not just to make it look nicer but to improve light levels all the way through winter so that's quite an important job to get done and uh, if you've not been to Cleveland's before again it's a really lovely little place to go it's got a beautiful promenade it's got actually lots of sculptures out on the beach um, and I'll let you try and figure them out yourself um, where they all are but the one I particularly like is the shell and it makes for a great photo op and the tide comes right in at Cleveland's it doesn't come in very often in St Anne's so you get lots of crashing waves and everything and it's really beautiful it's a great picnic spot it's a great paddling spot it's a great swimming spot and it's one of my favorite cycle rides so on Wednesday we were hiking in Rivington and this was the day actually when the Lake District, which is about 40 miles north of Rivington, got a foot of water, 12 inches of water in a single 24 hour period. So I'm very pleased I decided to stay in Rivington rather than go to the lakes because we didn't get any rain. We had a fantastic walk. We were walking in T-shirts and we were very pleased to see that the reservoir levels are continuing to rise there and no doubt the reservoir levels in uh, the Lake District benefited from that one foot of water in a day. That is very unusual in this country. So I think Monday, Tuesday, something like that, I did manage to get the lawn cut as well, which I didn't mention. And I'm basically trying to take any opportunity right now to cut the lawn because it's growing so fast. It's been so mild and so wet um, that it's hard to keep on top of it. But it's also difficult to find days to cut it because it's been so wet. So anyway, I was pleased to get that done. I think there'll be one more cut. Uh, before winter and anyway down to Thursday and it was raining again and so I was cafe hopping all morning writing mostly and then I did manage to get to the allotment now my objective for that short visit was to get my winter brassicas potted on now one of the things I really like to do one of my favorite techniques I would say is to overwinter brassicas and it works particularly well for cauliflowers and calabrese and spring cabbages and things like that which is that you plant them in sow them rather in sort of september october and you can even do a sowing in november as well and you overwinter them 
indoors, so uh, undercover rather, so in a cold frame or a polytunnel or a greenhouse, I tend to do it in my polytunnel, and they just grow really nice and slow, and they don't seem to be growing very much by the, by the time you get to February, which is when you want to plant them out, they're actually nice, big, stocky plants, and the fact that you've sown them, you know, in September, October and November means that you get a nice succession when they come when it comes to harvest time now you don't get them a month apart which is what you might imagine would happen you get them about two weeks apart by the time it gets to next year so hopefully we'll have a harvest in april early may and late may from those sowings and then we'll be into june and the june harvests will be the ones we sow in february so it's a great way of getting this nice continuous harvest and it's just a bit of fun uh, but it makes a massive difference to the diet if you're self-sufficient to have all of those flowering brassicas as well as obviously purple sprouting broccoli and things like that which you sow back in June. And that's one of the nice things about them, particularly Calabrese I think, is that rather than purple sprouting broccoli, which as I said you sow that back in June and plant that out in sort of July, August time in this country, uh, and so it takes prime growing space all the way through the rest of summer and autumn and most of winter. And then you harvest it in May. So it actually takes most of spring as well. Whereas with Calabrese, you don't actually plant it out until February and you still get the harvest in May. And so you get you know, all that extra space basically to uh, grow all your summer and autumn crops and even you know early spring crops. So I think it's a fantastic thing to grow if you've got somewhere under cover to grow it and plant it. Because it does, when you're planting it out in February, it does need to be in a polytunnel or a greenhouse or a coal frame or a low tunnel. I did also do a video about getting enough salads over winter, which is a big challenge here because the rate of growth of salads drops to quite a low level maybe a tenth of its growth rate in summer over winter, particularly from about the middle of December to about the middle of February. That's the worst period of time. And so if you're a big salad fam eating family like we are, and um, we need to eat I don't know, 25 litres or something, maybe more than that, maybe 15 litres, I can't think straight while I'm talking, um, but a lot anyway of salad all the way through winter, then you need a lot of that in the ground. And this year I've got three things that I'm doing to try and make that happen. So the first thing is that I've sown a lot of, and planted a lot of um, salads in the polytunnel where they grow best. Uh, second thing is I've got some extra bonus plants that I've put into um, hanging baskets and I've put those in the canopy effectively in the polytunnel. And that means they're getting maximum warmth and maximum light, so they'll grow the strongest. And those are plants that I'm happy to harvest the whole plant rather than harvest them as cut and come again plants. And I will do that with some of my other main beds. And the third thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grow some under these grow lights behind me and in other places in the house. Um, and obviously I can't have a huge space for those, but it means that they will be actively growing all the way through that period uh, because under grow lights, obviously, they think it's summer. So those three things, I think, will mean that I should get a nice continuous harvest. And the nice thing is about doing that with the grow lights is I'm not really using the grow lights at that time of year. So it's a way of making best use of that investment. I don't really need them until about the end of February, which is when all my peppers will need the, the uh, grow light space. So yeah, it's just a, a bonus really for me. And uh, just, make, I guess, just makes gardening a little bit more interesting to take on the challenge of having year round abundance of as much as possible. And salads have always been an issue. So here we go. Let's see if we can get year round abundance of salads as well as everything else. Friday was another rainy day, but I did manage to get out for an hour on the dunes. And one of the nice things about St. Anne's is that we don't really have any hills and we don't really have any forests, but we do have amazing, an amazing dune system. And hiking through those dunes is really hard work 
So it's a bit like having a kind of low grade Lake District on my doorstep. And I can certainly work up a good sweat and get some nice views and get plenty of fresh air. So it's, yeah, it's really nice and I'm really, really thankful for it. And it took me quite a few years actually to realise just how amazing the dune system was, uh, just from the perspective of beauty, uh, but also from the perspective of getting a good workout in. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the upgrades to my book. So I have now finished the chapter on um, adapting to climate change. I finished the text of that last week, but now it's got all the videos and diagrams and um, photos and things like that added to it. I also finished the chapter on planting in the basic section. And I can't believe that I hadn't finished it before. It was just, I thought I'd finished it when I came around to look at it one day. Uh, last week, I think I realized there was loads of sections that just had headings. So I finally got that finished and again, decorated that with all of its pictures and videos. And as I mentioned earlier on, I am moving this diary, um, the written part of this diary, into the reference section of the ebook. That reference section is becoming pretty comprehensive now. And if you've not looked at it before, it's worth looking at it. So in each month, there's an overview, which tells you, you know, that at high level, these are the sorts of things that you should be doing in October, for example. And, you know, that's just all written text. Uh, it's very easy to sort of skim through that uh, as just a sort of aid to memoir. And I use that all the time. What it also has, though, in that section is it has all the things that we're sowing in that month, all the things that we have planted in that month, all the harvest videos from that month um, and tour videos from that month and now the diary entries from that month. And it also has uh, a, summer, a, a list of all of the videos that I shot in that month in the last five years of my video making. So that is pretty useful if you're interested in any kind of topic that uh, is relevant to a time of month. So if you wanted to look at tour videos from two years ago, or you wanted to see if I did any videos that showed what my spring cabbages looked like, or overwintered brassicas looked like in October or November or whatever the month is, it's really useful. So I use this all the time now, basically. That's why I call it reference information because I'm referring to it all the time. And all of the embedded database content, which is what I'm sowing, what I'm planting, all the videos and all that sort of thing, you can just click on the bottom of those, uh, click open in web page, I think it says, and that will open up a full kind of searchable, filterable, sortable uh, view of that data, uh, which is incredibly powerful. So, for example, if you opened up all of the things that we sowed in October, but you were only interested in lettuces, you could filter that list and just show the lettuces, for example. If you were interested in just a particular variety, you could search for that variety. You can also export that data into Excel and use it as the basis of your plan for next year, for example. So there's just loads of power in that reference information section. So I'm really excited next year to continue to sort of build that as a really great reference information source. The other thing that I've been working on is a, a, a way of helping people figure out all the different successions that you need in order to be self-sufficient all year round. Now, obviously you don't need every one of those successions. So you could decide you just wanted to do main crops and main crops are the easiest thing to do um, and so if you just want to get the best yield at the best time of year then you just do the main crop sowings but if you wanted to have uh, extend the season you do the early crops and late crops as well and things like that now the nice thing about the way that i've done it or i think it's the nice thing is that each succession has recommended varieties so i don't recommend the same varieties for early crop um, you know, second early crop, main crop, etc. Uh, different varieties for each succession, or not in every case, actually, sometimes they're the same, same varieties. Um, but also the growing conditions for those uh, different successions and the sowing times, the planting times, 
the first harvest times and the last harvest times for each succession uh, and some hints on how much to sow and how to harvest and all sorts of stuff. So basically everything that I've learned over the last six years growing year round is kind of being built into the database. And I love this for myself. I find it's incredibly useful. And because it's in the database, it's all searchable, sortable, filterable, et cetera, et cetera. So it makes it really easy, for example, to say, what can I grow to harvest in March? And you get all the different things that you can harvest and when to sow them and when to plant them and what sort of cover they need and all of that sort of thing. And if you only have, uh, if you only grow outside, you can just filter by all the things that you can plant outside. But if you've got a polytunnel, you can filter by all the things you can plant in a polytunnel. You know, it's just, I think it's great. Um, but then I, I did do it, so that's not surprising. As I've been writing all of the individual growing guides, so the guide to growing Brussels sprouts, the guide to growing lettuces, the guide to growing spinaches, the guide to growing guide to growing turnips, etc. All of those have been built with this framework in mind. And of course, I stole the framework from potatoes. So there are first early, second early, early main crop, main crop and late crop uh, for most things. So that's the way I'm doing it. And so it, I think it's just a big upgrade and it just makes everything so simple. Because if you look in the back of a seed packet, it'll often say, so between February and July or something like that. And that just doesn't work. That is not a good enough advice because the way that you would grow something in February is completely different to the way you would grow it in July. And often you would not want to grow that variety all the way through from February all the way through to July. If you were growing something in, Ju in February, you'd probably want a different variety to the one that you're doing in July. Uh, and as I said, you probably want to put it under fleece in February, but you wouldn't want to put it under shade in July. So it's capturing all of that nuance about how to do it. So that is basically it. So I'm going to tag the harvest video on the end of this. So here's a quick look at the harvest table for this week. So we've got some mixed potatoes, red and golden beetroot, onions, shallots, parsnips, pears, Ocker for the salads, uh, spring onions for the salads. I've just finished writing my guide to growing spring onions, by the way, which you can find a link to that in the description below. And these potatoes actually are swift, and you don't normally get swift at this time of year, but these are grown from the first season swifts. And so I will start chitting these fairly soon so that they are ready to plant in January. I don't need very many, obviously, because uh, you don't want to do too much in January, but that is enough for three containers and that lasts us a month. So we then do the rest of them in February. So then we've got pak choy and tatsoi. Uh, there's three boxes of that. Uh, pea shoots, collets, and these are field bean tips, beautiful. A great addition to spinach. You can use them at the same time as spinach or as an alternative to spinach. Some nice little apples, some parsley. This is the very last of our peppers. So that is it now, apart from the huge quantity that we have in the freezer. And carrots, so these are our autumn and early winter carrots, and we'll switch over to, uh, so they're variety Touchon, and we switch over to Eskimo in late winter and spring. Chard, uh, true spinach, more true spinach, and more true spinach. We don't have a lot of true spinach at the moment. We've got a lot coming, but then we'll need a lot because uh, we get through a lot of spinach over winter and it grows quite slowly. Uh, turnips, radishes, salad carrots, and all the mixed brassicas. So 
here we've got collet leaves, curly kale leaves, Brussels sprout leaves, the first little bits of purple sprouting broccoli. There's a few of these there. Uh, lots more of that to come. Uh, Tuscan kales, perennial kale. I think that's about all I picked today. And the salad mixes. And so I think we're two weeks away now from the new season, the winter salads being ready. So this is just the autumn salads. Uh, we've got a lot more winter salads. So hopefully the salad harvest will pick up a little bit. The spinach harvest will pick up a bit. The purple sprouting broccoli will pick up. We're still basically the same array of um, brassicas as we've got now, but we'll have more collets, we'll have more carrots, we'll have more parsley, we'll have more field beans. We won't have as much tatsoi and pak choy because that starts to sort of finish as you go into winter. Um, beetroot's from the store, so we'll have basically that until May. Car uh, potatoes are from the store, so we'll have those until May. Onions from the store till May. Parsnips until sort of January, February time. Uh, Ochre till sort of January, till March really. Uh, then we'll have radishes again. Uh, spring onions, we'll have those all year round. Apples for a few more weeks. Uh, salad carrots until the end of winter. Um, uh, turnips until winter. Radishes until winter. And as I said, the ochre take over from the radishes by then. So I think that's about it. Hopefully that gives you a good idea. So I'm pretty happy with that. It looks quite nice. And that, as I've said probably on a few videos now, this is our objective now, just to fill this table uh, every week until I should imagine March when harvest volumes start to pick up again. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.